last step will be taken each step i take just leads me closer at times i feel my fate begins to waver when up ahead i see a chism one it's then i turn and look up to my savior i am strong when he is by my side each step i take i know that he will guide me to higher ground he ever leads me on until someday the last step will be taken each step i take just leads me closer i trust in god no matter comes what me for life eternal is in his hand he holds the key that opens up the way that way that leads me to the promised land each step i take i know that he will my god to higher ground he ever leads me on shaka until someday a last step will be taken my god each step i take just leads me close each step i take my savior my savior goes before me and with his loving hand he leads me the way and with each breath i whisper i adore thee oh what a joy to walk with him each day hey, shine. each step i take i know that he will guide me to higher ground he ever leads me on until someday the last step will be taken each step i take just leads me close each step i take I know that he will guide me to higher ground. He ever leads me on until someday the last step will be taken. Each step I take just leads me close. Come on, clap those hands unto the Lord. Clap those hands unto the Lord. Clap those hands unto the Lord. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them in a time like this when hell is at loose. Tell them the kingdom of God still stands. Glory be to God. Second Samuel chapter 15 from the 13th verse. Amen. Down to the 17th verse. 
each step I take. I know that He will guide me to higher ground. He ever leads me on until someday the last step will be taken. Each step I take just leads me close. The Bible speaks to us in this manner. It says, and there came a messenger to David saying, the hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And David said unto all his servants, that were with him at Jerusalem. He said, Arise, let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us. And smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servant said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth, and all his household after him. And the king left ten women which were concubines to keep the house. And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was afar off. 1 Corinthians 13. The Bible said, the first six verses, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and I'm not charity. I'm come. I become a sound and brass and a tingling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and I have not charity, profit me nothing. Charity suffer long and is kind, charity envy it not, charity vaunt it not itself, it is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seek it not her own, is not easily provoked, think it no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in truth amen great god i thank you and i give you all the praise thou art worthy to receive all glory all honor and all praise lord this is not of henry this is not of my doing my saying Lord God not of my proclivity not of my want and not of my glory but the glory belongs to you and you alone take it tonight take it and we give it with a willing heart we give ourselves away so that you can use us have a your way tonight Lord God, while we're here standing before you, just reach down your hands. Touch, oh God, anoint us afresh. Lord, we need a fresh flow. We need a fresh flow on tonight. We need a fresh flow from heaven. Lord God, we need a washed out mind, a cleansed mind. We need a heart, oh God, that is saturated with evil, oh God. And anger and hang-ups to be washed clean. Wash us. Make us clean. Purge us with his up if that must be. Then try us, God, to see if our hearts clean. In the name of Jesus. Have your way in this place. And no devil can stand in this house. No opposition can, no one cannot say amen in this place. Because you're speaking, you're here. Uh, you're here, your presence is here, Lord. 
Oh God, ready to oh God to change lives, to fill spirit, to talk to hearts in the name of Jesus. Saturate us in this place today. Touch me, the speaker. Very crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I can't do it all myself. I need you. Pour through me to the people in their ears and their heart. Let me understand what thus saith the Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And we say thank you for the victory. Somebody who believes God with me tonight, say in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody who believes the Lord God tonight, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To the household of faith, my father's children, I greet you in the matchless and magnanimous name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me that we are going into the house of the Lord. Amen. There's no other place I'd rather be. Maybe uh, you may have another place that you want to be, but I, I don't want to be anywhere else. I don't want to be in a mansion. I don't want to be uh, in, in a $30 million mansion. I don't want to be in a Bugatti. I don't want to be hanging out with socialites. I don't want to be hanging out with stars. I don't want to be hanging out. I want to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, yeah. And, and that's where the man of God said he wanted to be. He said he wants to be in the house of the Lord. Therefore, we'll offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Amen. And you ought to have that same resolve. You should be resolute in your heart at this point that you're not here for a man. You're not here for a woman. But you're here for Jesus. Come on, let's lift up your hands if you're here for Jesus tonight. Come on, let's take that Jesus break you need. Get out of yourself. Come on. Come on. Say, Lord, I'm here for you. I'm, I'm here to hear from you. You speak. You move. You take full control. Lord, I'm I'm here for you. Come on out of yourselves. Come on out of yourselves. Come on out of yourselves. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Conversely, love rejoices in truth. For in a time like this when hell is set loose, the kingdom of God still stand. How many believe that? Love does not rejoice. And as I alluded to last week, godly love does not derive joy or welcome that which is wrong. God does not get joy out of any wrong. No matter how you slice it, godly joy does not, or godly love does not derive from wrong. You can't do me wrong and say you love me. You can't say negative things about me and then turn around and say you love me. If I love you with a love of God, I can't be happy to see you in distress. Talk to me a little bit. Godly love only rejoice in that which is true. When that thing is right and not right in our own sights, as I told you last week, because our truths are not God's truths. 
our colloquial contemporary interpretation of words and actions and what we have called truth is not what God called truth. We talked about God's truth and God's honesty is that revealed truth. God reveals his truth in our hearts. Oh Lord, I wish I had. God reveals it in our hearts. And God, when God speaks in our heart, it is clear and it's crystal. And it comes with joy, even if you have to suffer. Because it comes from that progenitor. If you know that God's word is true, you are like those three Hebrew boys. Even if it cost you your life, you can rejoice because it's true. Man's truths can turn into lies based on circumstances and situations. What is true in a company can be switched, can be altered, can be manipulated to suit the masses. Because sometimes truths are not tr good anymore. So truths, according to man, has to change, has to be altered, to be tampered with, redacted, to suit the contemporary needs. But God's truth never changes. What God has said from the foundation of the world is still true. And no man can change that. Because it's a revealed truth. Jesus notwithstanding tells us that the heart from whence he does speak. Or heart to which he speaks. Not your chest pumping heart. But your spirit, your understanding. He said that heart, I speak from that heart. But he said in that heart. Lord, help me. That heart is the repository for good and for evil. So in your heart, God speaks to your heart. But God says it's just a repository. If I get there and I speak to you, then you'll do good. But if another spirit gets there, it also harbors that he said Jesus said in Luke 6 and 43 to 45 he said both good and evil is in the heart so the heart is a re 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 repository for both good and evil and that what comes out of our mouth good or bad begins in the heart so it's in that heart God speaks through our heart. It's a place, a seat of our emotion, our, our spirits. God speaks. But other spirits speaks as well. Consider this. It is easy to see how a hardened heart can dull a person's ability to perceive and understand what God, when God speaks. So God when he deals with a man, he deals with his spirit. He deals with his heart. But if that heart is hardened, that man can't hear from God. God wants to speak to everybody because he didn't die for a set of people. He died for everybody. And God comes to speak to you. And sometimes God has to Massage your heart. Because when he gets there, the heart is so hard that you can't even hear him speak. You can come to church with a hardened heart and you can listen to the best of sermons, but God can't touch your heart. 
You, you, can, you can be in the house of God day and night and your heart is still hard. Come on, King Saul. Heart is hard. God is trying to speak to him. But he can't perceive what God is saying. And so it has its own truth. Because sometimes we just believe some things and ain't nothing going to change us. I just believe this and that is it. I don't care what anybody else says. This is what I believe. Notice it said what you believe. It never said it is a revealed word of God. The only thing that is non-alterable is God's word. So every thought that you have, every concept that you have, it's alterable. That means it's not revealed truth. Every way that you have, whether good or bad, it's alterable. Only God's word is unalterable. Only God's word is true. Every philosophy, every idea, every ideology is foolishness. And you can have that as a standard. You can hold to your philosophy as the standard. Because your philosophy will deceive you. I'm all by myself already. Your philosophy will get you. Your philosophy will tear you down. You'll have your own philosophy. When you have your own philosophy, you do what you want to do. And, and, and there's a word for your philosophy. The Bible calls it iniquity. Calls it iniquity. You know what it is? It, 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 it's that word, it's that word, adikaya, we talked about last week. Wrongdoing. If it's not according to God's word, it's wrong. Misdeeds. If it's not according to God's deed, it's wrong. Unrighteousness. If you're not doing it God's way, you're doing it another way, your way, it is wrong. Wickedness. Injustice. It's that word, Adekiah. It's called iniquity. And we got to get real with ourselves, church of the living God. Because we have our own ideas and our own concepts. But anything that derives from your heart is iniquity. Because man's heart is evil. Continuously. Even from his youth. Well, I don't need your amen anyways. Shaiva. And that's why you need the word of God. Because only the word of God can work on it. Change my heart. Oh Lord, shout God, change my heart. Change my heart. Take away this heart of stone. Give me a heart of flesh. Give me something that's palpable. palpable. Give me something that's massageable. Give me something that's soft. Give me something that's workable. Any concept that you have is iniquity. It is. Because if it's not God's way, if it's not God's way, it's the wrong way. And that's the definition of Adekiah. Iniquity. It's wrongdoing. Now, we call wrongdoing if you don't do the thing I say is right. You call that wrongdoing. But what does God call that? So, so you base your whole tradition and your whole concept on what you think is right. But your right could be sending somebody to hell. Oh! Ah, oh, shakandaya. Your rights could be sending somebody to hell because it was not prescribed by Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, do what I say. 
If you love me, keep my command, not a man's commandment. Because you can keep all the law and omit the weightier matter of it. You can keep the whole law, but fail to keep the essence of it. You can sacrifice every day, but still no love. Look the part, but you're a devil in the making. Because if it's not according to Jesus, you are a one, a woman, a man filled with iniquity. When Jesus showed up on the scene, you said you whited walls. You filled with dead men bold. He wasn't talking to the sinner. He was talking to the saint. can keep the whole church law and still be called a devil. No! Because if it's not according to God's prescription, it's a wrong prescription. If it's not according to God's prescription, you're still going to be sick. That's why we can't get healed in our churches. Because we're doing it our way. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Because we're doing it wrong. We're not doing it God's way. God said, let peace be still. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow deal with itself. Just deal with it now. Have faith in God. Hey! But we have our own concept. Our own way. ideology but God says all of that is iniquity mm. now iniquity says that I am in violation I wish I had iniquity connotes that I am in violation I'm violating revealed truth. James 4, 17 says, Him that know what to do right and do it not, he said it's a sin. You can't tell God you didn't know because you have his word. And out of the amount of two or three witnesses, you have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost don't tell you anything aside from what Jesus already said. It would be the Holy Ghost's doctrine. And the Holy Ghost cannot have another doctrine. The Holy Ghost can't say anything Jesus did not say. Because he said he come to tell you everything. Jesus said everything that I have said. Some people say, well, it's the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost come to confirm. Because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word, the Holy Ghost can't testify for himself. Jesus can't testify for himself. Jesus said, I don't testify myself. But God. Yeah. That sent me testifies of me. The Holy Ghost come. The Holy Ghost can't have a doctrine of itself. The Holy Ghost have to say what Jesus said. He said, all that I've said, the Holy Ghost will say. But if you're doing it your way, and Jesus never said it, it's iniquity. Even if it seems right in your own eyes. Even if colloquially, even if according to your contemporary way, it seems like a right thing to do. If Jesus never said it was right, it's wrong. Some people say, I choose to live that way. Go ahead then. My job is only to cry aloud and spare not. The thing about God's love is, God's love does not accept Man's truths. 
God loves rejects such things that do not comply with God's will and delight in all that is conformed to the truth of God's word. God's word rejects everything that does not conform. So sometimes you wonder why you're doing what you think is right and you can't get anywhere with God because it's not what God prescribed. Sometimes we just give a little, you know, we give a little and we say, well, you know, I give to the poor. But that's not what God's talking about. Well, no, I give to Salvation Army. That, that, and we think we feel justified by that. But until you have revealed truth in your heart, you're not given salvation army out of the love of God. You're given to the salvation army to make yourself feel good. Here, you want to give to salvation army? Take the meal that you only meal you have left and give it to the salvation army. And you go starving. Then I say you got revealed truth. Take your last might. God's, God's truth is not ours. God will tell you sell everything and come follow me. But I don't think that we want to hear that. We don't, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear the truth about God's word. We don't want to hear revealed truths. Because revealed truths are hard to say amen to. Because it asks the seemingly impossible of you. God doesn't ask you for easy things. Well, he can do it himself. He asks you for the hard things. You want to walk with me? You got to suffer with me. You want to reign with me? You got to suffer with me. Testing and trying is not an easy thing. It's called testing for a reason. It's called trying you for a reason. And God reveals truth will always test you and try you. Because he's going to ask you to do some things that you just don't feel like you can. And, and somebody said, well, at least I'm honest with God. It still means you're going to hell. Well, I, at least I was honest with God and I told him the truth about me, but you never did what he said to do, so you're still going to hell. I can't put it any way. Okay, you're not going to heaven. It's true. That's why when the day the judgment came, they came up before the Father and he said, You know, Lord, Lord, I've done. They're telling the Lord all that you have done. But he never said, Lord, this is what you have done through me. Every work that is done, every work that is done is the Father that doing it, not I. It's not I that do the work, it's the very Christ that dwells in me. So if you've been doing the work and you've been doing this and you've been doing that, then it's you. You know, so I'm, I'm here preaching yesterday, and the sister got sick. And it's ready to die on us. And God said, no, we don't do it like that. Bring, bring the sister up in the house. It, 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 it's not Henry working. I'm, I'm up in the heaven trying to, my ears, I'm just saying at one, my ears is connected to God's lips. And God said, bring the sister in the house and let her face the congregation. Let me show them who is God. Let me show them reveal truth. Let me show them my power. Let me show them my awesomeness. Let me show them. And in case you didn't believe it, the ambulance attendant came in and told you. That there's nothing. She's perfect. As a matter of fact, she ran up back. She ran inside and said, the ambulance attendant wants to meet you. Why? It's not me. But it is God. And here's revealed truth. Revealed truth says, simply says, where is she? 
I knew something was up. Because I'm preaching. And you think I'm distracting. But God said, she's not well. I heard him. But I didn't move. Because he didn't tell me to move. So he waited until she was almost dead. Close to it. And then he said, okay, get her. And then the Christian attendants outside. And God said, bring her in. And then, why you turn her back to the brethren? God said, turn her around. I said, turn her around. And God said, keep preaching. So I turned my back and kept preaching. The Lord said, okay, now is the time. Turn around, turn around. Now lay your hand. Yes, Lord. I so it's, it's, it's God speaking. Not my doing. If it were my doing, the sister would be dead. But I saw something maybe you didn't see. When I said, yes, Lord, because I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to God. And I went like this. Favor. Somebody shout favor, favor. I said, favor. I, I felt something left me. Touch her. And she did this. Y'all didn't see that? The power of God just. <clears throat> she went like that and then she started smiling. Then I knew it was over. And everybody's like, I said, what y'all doing? It's already done. It's already done! Because it's God's revealed truth. That, that is in line with the word. The Bible said, take it to the elder of the church. And he'll pray that prayer of faith. And God will do what? Y'all don't hear about it. God will raise. God will do what? Y'all ain't ready. Listen now. God will do what? God will do. Open your mouth and say, God will do what? Because that was already revealed truth. So the Holy Ghost couldn't tell me to do anything else but what was in the Word. So we're going in this Christian walk not realizing that everything has to be conferred. Every word, if, you're by, if you say you have some spirit telling you something and it's not in the word, and it's not one of those things where you go check it out to find it over, over here. Because your word and God's word are not the same word. God must point you. If God is not with you, then your heart then is hearing from another spirit. And, 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 and when you're hearing from another spirit, the reason why you're hearing it is because something got to your heart first. And, and in some cases, pain got to your heart. Anger gets to your heart. Jealousy. Because somebody took your man. Somebody took your woman. Somebody took your money. And you got some anger in your heart. And I told you last week that when you have anger in your heart and you go to bed, that's why he said, don't let the sun go down. You know, I said that last week. I got to talk to you, brethren. I said it last week because I, I don't know. I have not had a moment of rest in weeks because I've been writing and reading and reading and writing and counseling and doing all kinds of stuff. And I'm reading, all, I've been reading reams and reams and reams. And, 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 and I, I said it last week about the Holy Ghost. I didn't know what I was talking about. I said that when you get, go to bed angry, that it attracts devils. And I gave you the word for it. I said, the Bible said, don't let the sun go down on your anger. And so I went to read it, I went to read it, I went to read it. And my God, I saw it go. I couldn't believe, I, in my re I said, man, sometimes he said, Lord, you really talking E? Sometimes I, God says something and I'm saying, I'm like, mm -mm, you don't know about that. I got to be honest with you, brethren. Sometimes God puts some things in my mouth and I don't know what I'm talking about. Because it's really not I, but it's the what? The Christ. And, and, but it's, you know, when the sun goes down on your anger, nocturnal demons show up. And you go to your bed. And you close your natural eyes and your spirit's alive. And nocturnal demon shows up and starts giving your spirit counsel. And if there's no word of God to combat that spirit. 
You see, Lord, I'm all by myself. Even when you have the Holy Ghost and the Word, the devil still come to try you. You know why he comes to try you? Because he once lived in you. And he left, he got thrown out. And he comes back to see if this house is garnished, which is garnished, if it's clean enough for him to come in. Is there a way for me to get in? If he comes back and see anger, well, he brings hate and murder. Oh, God, and he brings everything with him. Lord, I'm all about myself. He brings everything with him and he walks up in the heart and he gives you counsel all night and you wake up a murderer. Because you start thinking, how am I going to kill my brother? How am I going to kill my sister? And when so God sends somebody to check you, he said, am I my brother's keeper? What do I care? went to bed an innocent and you woke up a murderer before you commit the act you already committed in your heart because the devils are in and the devils don't waste time they get to work right away uh, they get to work and they get your mind right because there's no word to combat it even with the holy ghost they come in but you gotta say in the name of jesus Devil, you got to flee. Tell me who can stand before me when I'm rising up in Jesus' name. When your heart is, when your heart is, you know, there's an entrance. The devil, like God, is no respecter of persons. The devil will make you kill your own parents. The devil will make you kill your own kids. The devil will make you take your own life. No! Oh! Lord, I feel that deep in my soul. The devil will make you do some things that you never fathom that you can ever do. Why? Because there's no word in you. That's what the Bible said, man, I always to pray, man. Come on, tap your neighbor and say, you got to pray, man. You got to pray, woman. You got to pray, man. You got to pray, woman. You got to pray without ceasing. There's a reason why God said to pray without ceasing. Because even as a child of God, you are under attack. Here's a big demon, demon of sleep. You know why demon of sleep gets you? Because the devil knows I got to put you out before a word get in you. I got to put you out. I can't afford you to hear no word. Because when Jesus comes, all the tempter's power, when Jesus comes, puts his hand on the serpent, and crushes his head. God starts speaking. Talking to the heart. And the heart must comply. Because his voice makes the difference. I don't know what other voice you listen to. But I need to hear the voice of Jesus. When pain. And anger. And an upset spirit gets into your heart and there is no word you can survive. You are susceptible to the plan of the enemy. You will follow the discourse that the devil has set in your heart and there is no escape. Don't get mad when you read your Bible. You said, oh, Saul is so silly. You said, Israel is such a fool. But you're criticizing others when you don't even see yourself. 
Because the people who criticize the most, just take a look. As a matter of fact, the preacher said, they haven't made any glasses to look at yourself yet. I spent all day looking at you. But I need a spectacle to see me. I need something to see me. You see, a mirror is an instant. It's second you do. No, I want a glasses to watch me all day. Because I'll say, oh, wretched man that I am. I need something to say to you. If you only see who you are. But we love to criticize. Without knowledge. And that's what the Bible said. My people. And, and this is an eternal word. My people perish. For a lack of knowledge. See my people are happy to be in religion. Mm. But my people are happy to be in religion. My people are happy just to be in a sect that say they're going to heaven. My, my people love the jumping in church. We love that stuff. But there ain't no Holy Ghost in that. Body the exercise profited a little, and the little that it profits is only in the physical. It give you let your blood flow. But you're still going not to heaven. Politically correct. You ain't going nowhere with jumping. You love to jump. And I love to jump too. But sometimes I'm jumping. I'm wondering if I'm jumping because I love to jump. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm like, Ooh! and I'm like, are you just doing this because you love this boy? Or are you doing it because God is moving you? See, I know God's moving me tonight because I'm here praying before I come out and God is just, just nah! my spirit. God is just in my spirit. You know, and God did sing this song. God, and I said, say this word. And, and, and I realize when God is really talking to me, I, I, I don't feel like jumping. And God is really speaking. I'm so attentive. I'm not jumpy, jumpy. But there's a time. Somebody said, there's a time, there's a time. There's a time, there's a time. There's a time for everything. There's a time to jump and there's a time to be still. I said, be still now and no. I am God. The time when you got to be still. And not still to stare at people. But be still to hear his voice. And closing your eyes don't make you holy either. Honey, you're still not going to heaven. Because we have all these dumb traditions. And somebody go, oh, that person, we are holy. Oh, that person is in the spirit. Oh, you got a spirit. I don't make you holy. No, no. You can talk to God with your eye wide open. So we don't talk to God. We say, no, it's reverence in God. No, you, you reverence God by the life you live. Amen. By the life being a testament that they may know that you are my disciple. By the life you live. That speaks to the love of God. Lord, I wish I had about four of you. When, when I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. I, I, it's the Lord that want me to drive this home because, you know, people just love the conventional this and the conventional that. Like Bible study is supposed to be this way and preaching is supposed to be that way. Listen, I ain't according to you none of y'all ways. None of y'all call me. I'm going with Jesus. I ain't going with no man. I told you the other day, God changed my life. My life got changed last week. I think I finally got converted last week. God changed my life. God woke me up 3.30 in the morning. Andrew, I got to talk to you. I said, yes, Lord. And he got ministering to me. And God says, who you are, some of the people who you thought were close to you, can't get it, can't understand it, can't perceive it. Because really, they're not asking me about you. He said, they don't know you. They, they think they, you should fall in a box. 
of what they think you are. But you know what he told me to do to those people? He said, shut the door. He said, shut it. You're going to shut the door to some people that are going to make you cry. Shut it. Shut the door on some people that are real close to you. Shut it. You got to shut the door on some people who you thought were, you kept close to your heart. Shut it. I told you 11 years ago that I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And nobody else can reward you but I. I was up in there crying. I had to go downstairs. I was sobbing so hard I had to go way down in the basement. Because I'm a man, you know. I'm a man, bro. I'm a man. Can't let nobody here see me cry. Hell no, I'm down in the basement sobbing. <laughs> because some people I got to shut out. How dare to me. <laughs> Weeping, crying. God say, there's some people got to go because who you are. No, people can't understand. He said, what is pouring out of you? He said, the thing that is pouring out of you, people don't have the capacity to receive it. People don't have the room because full people can't receive anything from God. If your bucket is full, you can't receive nothing from God. He said, you love the people who are full. How do you expect full people to love you? How do you expect full people to want to accept who you are? He said, full, Lord. If you eat, the other day I ate too much and I felt sick. I was cursing myself, gravelicious. I'm telling myself off. Because I know if I took one more bite, I'm good. I took the bite and I felt sick. But when God is getting rid of some things, some of the closest people to you, they can't, even what I'm saying now, people can't receive it. God, listen, that's what I'm saying. My calling is not for you. You have your own calling. But God said, I got to shut the door. So I had to shut doors. And I shut the door. And I shut the door. With tears, shut the door. Some doors. Like, but he said, it's not that they, you don't love them. Because I'm questioning myself if I do love them or not. But God says, it's not about love, Andrew. It's about you got to shut the door in order to accomplish what I've called you to do. Remember Joseph. Your brothers, they don't hate you. They don't want to necessarily murder you. Well, some do. But they don't want you to be wearing a coat with many colors. And not, I told you yesterday, not that the coat with many colors make you any special than anybody else. It's just that you have a purpose. Your calling has an end date. It has a purpose attached to it. So God don't call you without a purpose. And your purpose is not always palatable. To your brothers and sisters. You have a calling that is not palatable at times. And your callings can scare some people. Scare the lights out of them. And my, I remember my mom, I heard the calling. Ma said, Lord, you're afraid. But then she did, that woman did something good. She went to God and asked God herself. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know the calling, go ask God. Don't be intimidated by the call. Don't get upset. Don't get angry. Don't launch an attack to assassinate. Don't you see a devil's in your heart? Mm. Oh, shy. Don't you see that there's a devil in your heart? If you don't like who I am and you launch an attack at me, you are overtaken by another spirit. God said, you got to shut the door. Come on, say shut the door, shut the door. Got to shut the door on some things. Got to close some people out. Not everybody going to like you. you. 
judging some things you have, people they ain't gonna like you for. They, they ain't gonna like you. You can't make people love you. I love the Lord with all my heart. I love my brother and sister, but if they don't love me, I still gotta press on the upward way, do I again every day? Can't make everybody love you. But you got to be godly. And you got to do everything that God said. Second Samuel said something. It says that David was king. I, I want to just give you an overview first. I'm going to get into this. See, David was a king. But David did some things earlier in his life. You know, he killed Uriah. You remember that? Because you can be godly and do some damage. Because David went to bed with lust in his heart. And the sun went down on the lust in his heart. And demons. Remember? Who just got here early? Late for you, brother. If you allow the enemy, oh, you didn't get away either. If, if the sun goes, everybody get licks when they come late here. Hey, if you allow the sun to go down on your, your, the thing that is ungodly, whether it be anger, whether it be lust, whether it be a viciousness, whatever it is, you go down and you open the gate. A word. You open the vortex. You open a vortex in your heart. And demons will always feed into you the thing you went to bed with. That's what the Bible said. Don't let the sun go down. It's a great warning. It's a great warning. It's not just for you to take lightly. Do not go to bed with anger. Do not go to bed with lust. Do not go to bed with any, anything that is not revealed truth. Don't Listen, ask God. That's why you got to pray before you go to bed. Lord, cleanse me. Wash me. Cause me to forgive. Notice that if you go to bed with an anger, you wake up even more angry. As a matter of fact, you wake up 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Because as God will wake you up at 3 or 4, the devil will also wake you up at 3 or 4. I just couldn't sleep. I'm so upset. I'm, I'm so angry, Brother Gary. I'm so angry, Brother Cliff. I couldn't sleep last night. Why? Because you went to bed and demons showed up. That's why Jesus, the Lord told Cain, he said, Cain, 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 no, 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 no. He said, the devil crouched at your door. Whenever the devil sees an opportunity to strike, he sits right there. He doesn't care if God's watching. The minute there's a crack, he's coming in. Cain, Cain, Cain. Listen, David did some wrong. God said to David, a sword. The sword will never depart from your house. He said, I'm going to put a sword in your house. And it's never depart. It's going to tear you up. It's going to destroy you. Watch this. David is now king. And David is sitting as king. David got concubines. David got all kinds of wives. And David is doing this thing. David is so caught up in his life. You know, he's chilling. He forget that there's a word. And there's something about God's word. He never changes. He never takes it back. He actually follows it to make sure he watches over his word. So there is a word from God. He follows it to make sure that no weapon form against it shall stop it. That's why you don't got to worry if there's a word of God in your life. And you're going through hell. You just got to praise God because there is a word from God. Amen. David, David, David. is going. And his son. Something happened in his house. This is our study. And, and you don't rejoice. Our studies. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoice in truth. David's son, Absalom. I want to work on him tonight. Can we work on Absalom tonight? David's son, Absalom. 
Something happened in his house. His sister Tamar, that's his bona fide sister. That, that he, that's his sister's sister because they have the same mother, same father. And, 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 and his brother, half-brother Ammon, Ammon fell in love with his half-sister. And, and, and he wooed her, and he wooed her, and he wooed her. And he you got to be careful, people of God, some of the affections that you have. Because your affections can be thwarted by the enemy. Your affections can be thwarted by the enemy. But the enemy can cause your affections to change. And you'll do unscrupulous things. Talk to me a little. And there's some things that are not scrupulous that you find yourself doing because the enemy gets into your mind. Now, Ammon, I'm not working on him tonight. I'm working on Absalom. Ammon got twisted and Ammon went in and he had to have his sister. He even asked David, you know, can I, can I get her to serve me some stuff? And, and he, was, he was adamant that he would get her. And then he, he defiled her. He took her virginity. And then he shamed her because he never wanted to what? See her again. But, but here comes Absalom. Absalom heard this and he's enraged. He tells us that, Daddy, you know what that fool Ammon did? And David did nothing. David did nothing because David was too caught up in his own life. And David, nothing that's created anger in Absalom's heart. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. It created anxiousness, and it turns into bitterness and anger, and then hatred. And he says now, i got to get my revenge. He said, I, it, it, that, and, and it became twofold. Because he's not only angry with his father, he's now angry with Ammon and his father. He's upset. He's angry. And he said, I'm going to get revenge. And he says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill that brother of mine. Now, Absalom did something wrong Amon took his sister's virginity so he says forget this God thing that I've been taught God ain't doing nothing my daddy's not doing nothing I'm gonna do something for myself so he had a plan you see, that's why the church, the Lord said, and here's a PowerPoint. And this is a PowerPoint. You've got to understand this. The Lord never wants the church of God to be married unequally. Why would you say that? Because one of David's wife, her name was Makai, or Maka, M-A-A-C-H. And her father was Talmai, king of Jeshur. So David married outside of Israel. And the godly revealed world, word did not come to alien kings. Oh Lord. Talmai of Geshur, he he wasn't a godly king, but he respected David. So he gave David one of his daughters to marry. And David went and marry her. But look at the ramifications of that. Absalom is angry with his brother. He makes a plan. He said, my, if I kill my brother, my father, because of the law of God, will kill me. But my grandfather... His mother's father, who was Talmai, he said, I'm going to run to him and he's going to give me protection. 
So he defied God's word and ran away. God says, don't marry outside. Because when you're outside, you can't have one foot in and one foot out. And when you're outside, you, you, you are capable of doing some things. You find yourself in some compromising situation. And you justify it because your husband or your wife is not in church. Talk to Holy Ghost. God, when, when you are in God, you got to be all the way in God. You got to walk all the way in God. And you can't come to God and then say, I'm going to go find a wife outside of God. Now, if you came into God and you already had a wife, you're bound to your wife. Forget that. But I'm saying you can't come in the house now and go, oh, I see that wonderful damsel outside. Because you can't mix dirty water with clean water. Because the clean water is going to get. You can't mix oil and water or the water is going to be mixed up with. Oil. <laughs> clean water. One fountain can release dirty and clean. You can't. You can't mix it up. Because God has to exact some of his punishment. And some of his blessings. And God don't bless you halfway. And God don't bless. You can finish it. It does not bless unrighteousness. And so, but he had a plan. How do I usurp God's authority? He knows that his father is distracted. But the minute this happened, his father is going to go back to God's word. Because his, his father was a man after God's own heart. Even if you're after God's own heart, sometimes you get distracted. But when you come to your senses, you always go back to God. When it comes to a big decision, you always go back to God. I'm going back to Jesus. I'm going back to Jesus. I'm going where the healing waters flow. I hear my Savior calling. Repentance. Tears are falling. My heart goes back to Jesus. And I must go. You always go back to Jesus. The righteous always go back to Jesus. He falls seven times. But in time of trouble, he runs back to Jesus. He knew that his father would have revert back to the word. In those days, if you take somebody's life, your life is required. So he knew he was a dead man, but he planned it out. You know why he was planning it out? He planned it out because his heart was hard. And even when God was speaking to his heart, he could not hear him. I don't care what you say. You cannot be angry and be godly. Oh, let me go to this one. You're going to love this one. You, you cannot say you haven't forgiven your mother or father or sister or brother or anybody and say you're godly. Well, you know, I haven't spoken to my mama in 30 years. Well, you, you know you're not going to heaven. Oh, I knew that was good. I knew that, was, that one was good. Oh, you can't say... You can't say that you are lust filled in your heart. That the brother got the wife and you're upset with the brother. And he said, oh, praise, praise the Lord, brother Gary, and you ignore the wife. I was talking to you. I thought we were friends. You, you can't say that and be godly because your heart is hard. And a night or two went by in it already. And the devil's giving you all kinds of story. And the first opportunity I get to take you out. First time I get to expose you because you took my man. You took my girl. Absalom had it in his heart. He was angry at David. And many of us are angry. 
angry at some things in our lives. We're upset. And we can't let it go. God wants me to talk to you tonight. It's time for you to let it go. We're carrying some anger in our hearts. We're carrying some hang-ups. We're, we're walking around with baggages, Lord. I, we're, we're walking around with some heavy load. God, I hope that you're in a brook. We're walking around with some heavy load. Praise the Lord. You used to praise better, but it's not because you don't want to praise. It's because you got a heavy load. You used to dance in the spirit, but you know your feet can't move no more. Because now you have a heavy load. You, you, are, you are walking around with the burden that God said to cast on him. If you love the sister and you didn't get her, just cry to God, no? <laughs> no, 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 no. Brother, you always say, people say, just let it go. No, it don't easy to let go of somebody you think you love. No, no, let's get real up here, no? If you, love, if you think you love somebody, it's not easy to just let it go. Let it go. This ain't, who sing that song? See if any of y'all know. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. It's not easy to let go of somebody you love or you never love that person. Oh, come on, brother. Come on, sister. Just let it go and move on. Uh, you, you hypocrite. It's not easy to let go of some things that is in your heart. That's what the Lord said. You got to pray always. Talk to me a little bit now. The Bible never said at any point that Absalom prayed. You want to hear it even worse? It never, listen, in Israel, there was a man named Aitofel. We'll touch him later, a few weeks from there. But don't, don't knock Aitofel because he spoke as an oracle of God. That when anything God says on the throne, it comes out of his mouth. Verbatim. He was in Israel. It never said that he even went to him and say, you know, can I? What do you think about this? Is this right? He never went to Z Z Z Z Z Zodar. He never went. He never went to any of the priests. Abiata. He never went to anybody. He never asked for forgiveness. Zadok. He, he, he never Zadok. He never. He never went and asked anybody. He never even went to them. the Bible. Never said that he inquired of anybody or the Lord for help. And some of us are like this because we're proud. Can I talk to you for a minute? I don't know why I should have gone through this lesson, but I gotta work it. Can I work it? it? It never said that he inquired of God. And it blew my mind when God showed me this. So I said, we're all susceptible then. If I never ask God about a pain, then I'm susceptible, susceptible to the manifestation that it will bring forward. Did you hear what I said? If I never ask God about the pain or the wound or the anger or the hurt or the lust or whatever I have, if I never ask God to interject, to interfere, to step in it, then I am susceptible to, the, to whatever manifestation it brings me to. I mean, if it brings me to murder, I'm going to be a murderer. If it brings me to lie, I'm going to be a liar. Because I need some, watch this. I need a spirit that is greater than the spirit that has possessed me. That one went over your head. That one went over your head. The, the, the spirit of, of, of lust, let's use that. If the spirit of lust has possessed me. That means I went to bed thinking about the wrong thing and the devil came on in court and built up this lust in my heart to a point where it's out of control. And in order to, to eradicate this lust, I need a spirit that is stronger than that lust. I, I need a spirit that's stronger than the thing that is power in lust. 
I need a, a spirit that can crush the very power that is powering lust and lust itself. So that's why I need something that's greater is in me than he that is in the world. I need a stronger power. Oh! I need something greater. And, and that's why Peter was saying, where should I go? Who has the word of life? And why was Peter asking for this word? Because the word that comes from Jesus is greater and more powerful than anything that can possess me. That's what the writer said. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? So I don't sin. We misconstrue, misinterpretate that. We do. My brother, we do. You know how we do it? We take that scripture and say, you know what the word of God is mine. So I read my Bible every day. No, honey. It's not the seen. Watch this. It's the unseen that is at work. It is not the seen. It's the unseen work of God. When David said he had the word in his heart, so when, the sin, when the word of God is in you, when, when he has the heart to hear what God says, and when you do what God say to do, then God will take care of the rest. So, so the Bible said that, 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 that they, Solomon had peace for 40 years, not because of Solomon's doing. Is because of David's complying to God's word. So when David complies, God does the rest. The battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. It's the auntie. Now, I want to get this. Absalom now is angry. He's upset. Because his dad is not doing it. So he said, now I'm going to kill my brother. And he went ahead and he killed his brother. He murdered his brother. He ran down and he hid in his grandfather's house. And by virtue of doing that, he became a rebel. So now he had anger in his heart. He became a murderer. Defined, and now he is a witch. The Bible said rebellion is as a sin of what? Witchcraft. I know he became a witch because the first thing he says when he's down at his grandfather's house is, I'm going to kill my father. And how am I going to kill my father? I'm going to bewitch the people. You got to watch preachers who come to your churches. You got to watch who you're saying amen to. God wants me to work it. He wants me to work it. Absalom went down to his, and he came back with a plan. Watch this. The Bible says that he won the heart. He stood at the gate. And everybody who passed by, he gave them a beautiful counsel. He gave them a prosperity counsel. Because people love it when you tell them they're going to be blessed. They love it when they say, seven days, seven days, seven days. You're going to be blessed. People love them when you tell them how they're going to be. God is favoring you. God is on your side. God is only on the side of them that love him. He won their heart. Can I even get deeper here? You don't win somebody's heart. Unless you can possess them. See, the winning of the heart is something that misconstrues. You know, can I work this for a minute? You know when the Bible said man and his wife is like Christ in the church? It's the same thing. Her desire shall be to the man. So the man, in, in, in essence, has control over her. Watch this. Not every man have a control over a woman. 
So when that man now has control over you, it's like a possession. Huh? So then she is, she said, what this woman so stupid? She get beaten a hundred times and she still go back to the man. Because her heart is tied. Heart's tied. But you have some woman in this, this Lord. Your heart would never die in the first place. <laughs> Your heart's died. I'm going to call her evangelist Wilson for a second. Let me call her out. She says, when Elder was sick, she's like, <coughs> call you out. <coughs> Pastor, what am I going to do without him? I said, did you tell him that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm calling her out. She loved to act like she's tough. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have no towel to wipe those gold tears. But, but the heart is tied. It is. It might be pretentious, but the heart, because there's a possession. Now, in order for you to possess the people, two ways to possess a people. You can possess them like Jim Jones, which is bewitching you. Y'all ain't ready for this word. You want me to go back to contemporary stuff? No, no, no. I get here in your dry. Okay, let me be myself. You, Jim Jones was able to bewitch the people because he, he did it with a spirit. It's the spirit of. Oh, you guys are so bright. It's the spirit of witchcraft. Spirit of and witchcraft is empowered by a devil. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? So somewhere along the line, demons got into Jim Jones' heart. Even if he were once sincere. And now he was able to bewitch the people. And he captured their heart to the point where they drank cyanide. That's witchcraft. That's power right there. That's demonic power to make thousands of people kill themselves. You want to hear so deep? The reason why you can be really beguiled is because hurt. I told you hurt. Devils are attracted to hurt. If you do your research, you'll see that a lot of those people, you go back to their the dysfunctional life. They were raped, they were molested, they were wounded. They carried hurt. A lot of them were. And watch this. In Israel, there were many people carrying hurt. They did not like David. We'll get to Absalom, but to so give you context, to give you context, we get the Ahitophel, sorry, but for context, I'll give you Ahitophel. Ahitophel, do you know why he hated David? Because his granddaughter is Bathsheba. And David killed his grandson-in-law. So the first rebellion that came up, he said, I'm on your side. And I will give you a word from God because God himself cannot stop the gift. You missed this whole thing. God's, the gift and calling of God is without repentance. Even if you're possessed by a devil, you still can speak what God says. And God can't stop it. That's why you got to be careful. Oh, y'all don't believe me. That's why, you make me jump down in the text. That's why God sent Hushai to give another counsel. Because Ahitophel's counsel was right. If, he had, if Absalom had done what Ahitophel had said, David would be a dead man. And David knew it. That's why he ran. David is no fool. He knew who his counselors were. God gave him somebody that when he's talking, he knows God is talking. 
And he said, if he's not with me, when he heard he wasn't with him, he's like, come on, y'all. Let's get up out of here. No defiance. We got to go. Or else all of us are dead. Oh, God, 50 minutes later. Lord, I wish I could work it to me. Lord, I, oh, this is good. And so, so, yeah, so, so, Lord. So he became a rebel. He became a witch. Jesus, huh? What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You want to hear about God. That's what you want to hear. You know the other way already, right? So if, if I just gave you the, the devil part. You already know about God. That's the second way. God, you, it's a, do you know it's, it's you are possessed? You know the Holy Ghost is a possession? Oh, y'all didn't know that. Oh, no. You, oh, thank you. The Holy Ghost is a possession. And he makes you do what you might not want to do. That's why it's not I. So, so God, it's all a possession. Because I tell you, your, your, your heart is a place that can, that is a reservoir. It's a place where spirits come in. It's a place of counsel. It's a place of meeting. And that's where God speaks it, not the ticker. Your spirit. God comes in and God reveals himself in your heart. Likewise, the devil comes in and reveals himself too. And make a case for his right. So they're both trying to possess you. And God said, choose ye this day who you shall serve. You good with that? All right, we're having fun, are we? So, so, so Absalom developed what we call an adikai. A-D-I-K-I-A. That, 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 that's that, that Hebrew word now for an engulfed or filled heart with iniquity. Because his kenosis mind Became corrupt or corrupted by anger. Now, the heart and the mind, they're, they're inter, they intertwine. They intertwine, right? So the heart is the place where, the heart is the place where the revealed truth comes or the influence of the enemy. But the mind now is where you exercise it. Now, they're, they're intertwined, all right? Now, Absalom grew up with David, so he grew up with a kenosis mind. David taught him how to put God first. If you listen to the way he spoke to Solomon when he was giving him the throne, you understood who David was. David is not, he's a wild and a bloody man, but he was a very responsible man when he, comes to, when he came to God. See, we have to be responsible over our house. I could go into that for a while. But you got to be responsible. You can't allow your children, your your, your neighbor, your church brother, your church, you can't allow them just to get away with you got to give the right counsel. So, so Absalom had David all their lives telling them what is right, what is right, what is right, and what is wrong. So he had a kenosis mind. That means David taught them how to empty themselves of their own decisions and put God first. David had a different kind of relationship with God. People don't like when I say this, especially, you know, the, the holy ones. You know, they didn't like when I said, God told David, listen, you didn't have to do that. If you wanted another woman, I would have given it to you. The holy rulers don't like that one. But God said it's true. God said, why, why you kill the man? Just choose one other woman. I'll give it to you. Yeah. So God and David had a different kind of relationship. But he said, now, he said this to, 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 to Solomon. He said, he said, now put God first. Keep his command and his learn. And so all that to say, Absalom had a kenosis mind. He knew to get rid of himself. He did not put himself first. The decisions that he made through his father was directed by God. But because now he had this hatred in his heart, and the devil filled his heart, his heart now was engulfed, it was filled, and God can deal with a full house. God is attracted to capacity. God despises things that are full. Because a thing that is full can't receive a word from God. Because God will overflow. And his word will come to naught. So God is not going to give a word that can't come to pass. And that's why God don't give full people a word. 
For any word that a fool person has is a word that they contrive themselves. So now he, 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 the anger was in his heart, and his mind now only was on evil. So when you allow anger, resentment, and bitterness to linger, I told you they attract devils. And one cannot hear or adhere to God's will. And you can't be my brother's, I can't be my brother's keeper if I'm not hearing from God. I need to hear from God. God needs to speak to me. Now watch this. Now, here's a question that God asked me. And, and he said, how did iniquity enter his heart? Look at Psalm 66, 18. It says, it said, it said if I regard iniquity. That word iniquity speaks of heinousness in my heart. The Lord will not hear me. So if I regard any kind of iniquity, God stops speaking. Lord, if I regard iniquity, this book becomes null and void. If I regard iniquity, it doesn't matter how much I pray. Heaven will be shut up like an iron. Come on, King Saul. You're praying and you're praying and you're praying and heaven is shut up. Because you only can receive what you have conceived. You only can receive what you have conceived. So if iniquity is already conceived in your heart, that's what you're going to receive. So if you have that, is it if you regard it, if you store it, the transliteration says, if I store iniquity. That means in order for me, in order for me to get God to work for me, I've got to start an excavation. The, es the excavation process to get it out. Because if iniquity is in my heart, God can't deal with me. And my, my end is to do what that, that desire is. So Absalom had that iniquity in his heart because of that hatred, because of that anger. Because of that upset spirit. And he just couldn't get rid of it. Let's look again at something. That Zechariah 7 and 12 says. He said they made their hearts like flint. Zechariah 7 and 12. He said they made their hearts like flint. So that they could not hear the law. And the word which the Lord of hosts had sent. By his spirit. Through the former prophets. Therefore great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. They set, they made, they, they, they made their heart like flint. They made their heart impenetrable. When you are set in your spirit to do things, I told you at the very outset, anything that you think is right, that does not conform with God's word, it's iniquity. Your truths, if it does not conform to God's word, is called wrongdoing. The word iniquity is wrongdoing, unrighteousness. So you might think it's right, but it's, in, it's called iniquity before God. And sometimes when you think a thing is right, you are dead set on it. I'm right and I'm not changing. You're setting your heart like flint. And the minute you're dead, listen, talk to me, somebody, please. There's nothing in life that you should be dead set on. It has to be changeable. It has to be workable. It has to be correctable. Lord, I'm all by myself. Jesus. I don't care if you think it's right and you may look all the laws of the you, Listen, if you think it's right and the word of God does not confirm it, it is wrong. you 
decide you're going to throw somebody out because they did something you don't like. You are dead wrong. Oh, I wish. You are dead wrong. You can't have a, a set behavior. Lord, I, there's not one thing I could pin, but I, my mind is trying to run on one point to give you a good example, but I can't because if I, I don't want to set on, I, wanna, I want it to be set in your minds, in your spirit, that every decision you make, you must confer with God. Every big decision, every decision you make, God must approve it. Or it's called iniquity. Now, this walk is very serious. The righteous what scarcely make it because of wrongdoing. Everything you're gonna do, you gotta make sure God is in it. Because God said, You did it without me. And sometimes we shed our hearts. And I've been, done it many times. I set my heart to do something. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. When I did, I said, Mr. Foolish. Why did I do that? I'm so sorry. When you set your heart like Finn and could not, listen to this, Zechariah 7, 12, they made their heart like Finn so that they could not hear the law and words of which God, which the Lord of hosts had sent. This corroborate what I'm trying to tell you. So God sends his word now. To talk to your spirit, which is your heart, the seat of your emotions, and where God communicates. He sends it through his prophet. He sends it through the spirit, and you cannot receive it. You can't receive it because you are dead set on doing what you want to do. Some people think, oh, look. I did it and God is with me. God is still blessing me. Remember, cars and land and money is not a blessing. That's called what? Provision. A blessing can never be taken back. Absalom was set. His heart was set. He was determined. Now, Absalom was so upset and bitter with his father that pride came in. Pride entered into his heart. Pride saturated him. And the thing about pride is, the Bible says something powerful. It says, it says that you can be angry and sin not. But the problem with pride is that pride don't allow you to sin not. Once, once pride get in your heart, the sin not part cannot not do. When pride come in, because he's absolute heart was so dead set that he, you know, when you start making plans, I'm gonna kill him, I'm gonna run down here, and then I'm gonna wait, and I'm gonna beg his daddy, I'm gonna come back, when I come back, I'm gonna stand at the gate, and I'm gonna get the people's heart, and then I'm gonna kill him, and I'm gonna be the king. And I'm going to make better decisions than he can make. You know some people think they can preach better than the pastor until you get on the mic. <laughs> people think they're so anointed as they get on the mic, they start talking foolishness. Some people think they can sing, but others have their voice. How you doing, brother? <laughs> and you start singing, you croaking. <laughs> Are you understand? Yeah, yeah. But pride is such a, such a dagger. It is so prone. Listen, pride, pride comes from heaven. It, it, it comes from heaven. Pride, that's where it came from. Yeah. It, it came from heaven. And pride came from somebody who was made so beautiful. Can you imagine God made you so beautiful 
If God can make you so beautiful, then imagine how God beautiful. Because I know I ain't making you more beautiful than I am. <laughs> he made him so beautiful. The Bible said he's looking at himself going, mm, by his wings and his son. I, I am, I am. I am. I'm a piece of work. Yeah, you're a piece of work. Pride came from him. And if you have pride, that means you have personal contact. Lucifer. That's a personal contact with Lucifer. That means you're seeing yourself. Absolute. This is the deep part. This is the deep. But I don't want you. The demon of sleep, take your flight. I don't want you to miss this. Because when you start seeing yourself, you think you are more important than anything else. Than anyone else. Than any God. You see yourself as a God. What are you talking about? I don't see myself as a God. Yeah, you keep talking about yourself. Only God talks about himself. I look and I saw nobody, so I brought salvation to myself. I am, the, he called himself the I. Only God can talk like that. But if you've been talking like that, you, you, you got a godlike complex and you don't even know. That's the scary part. Absalom developed a godlike complex because pride got in. And the sun went down on his anger. And pride seeped in. And he was angry, but he could not get to the place where he could sin not. This is what the Bible said. He said, be angry but sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not give the devil a foothold. The word foothold means attraction or a grip. Lord, don't give him a grip. Lord Jesus. Lord, I wish. When the devil grabs your heart, he's not going to let go. There has to be a stronger hand than his. Mark was so bad when he was younger, so bad to me. Y'all shouldn't just rough him up. He should take all the marbles, you know, and he's so holy like this. Remember, Mark? Don't say yes, say no. Say you don't remember at least the night. And I couldn't get it out of his hand because they used to call him muscle puss. And I couldn't get it out of his hand. And I'm, ah! Can you just, he had such a muscle puss grip. You know what I'm saying? You're fighting, you try to better figure out, can't get it out because they have such a grip. And in order to get your heart out of the devil's hand, stronger. Lord Jesus, you need something stronger than his hands. Yeah. Holds on to Absalom's heart. But don't let the devil get traction, don't let him get a grip. Oh Lord, don't let him grab a hold of it. Don't let him squeeze it. Don't, Lord, he who has been stealing must stop it. How can I stop it? Somebody got a grip on me. Lord God, let me. But must work doing good. I can't do that because something has a grip. Never gets a grip on you. Huh. You are finished. I got to close it now because some of y'all got to go. But Absalom had a horrible spine. Have you ever had something that you just can't let go? You pray and you fast and it just won't go. You know, God can get a grip on you too, you know. Because Paul said, I prayed. <laughs> Paul said, I prayed three times. Lord, let me go, let me go, let me go. I said, my grace is sufficient. Likewise, can the devil can grab you too. And he ain't, and he ain't got no grace. 
He's not trying to hear. The minute he holds you, he is not letting you go. He was, Absalom decided that, you know what? This is it. And he could not hear God. And his heart was overtaken. He was finished. But, but before you go there, and we're going to deal with Ahitophel next week, and, and we'll deal with David next week. But I, before you go, I want to tell you that his, his, his heart was, his heart was gone. This is going to hurt you when I say this. There's a level that you will reach where you're not even retrievable by God. You got to be careful. There's a level where you reach not retrievable by God. It's not that he can't do it. Nothing is impossible God. He won't do it. After you have passed all the warning and you have deliberately he turns you over to a reprobate mind. Sometimes we stay in that state. Why the brother can't change? Why the sister can't change? Maybe they've gone to a place that's unretrievable. Mm. I can't give you all the solutions. People want to say, the solution can't come until we get to the end of the story. And God gave me solutions. I got many solutions. Don't get place for the devil, but that's all before he grabs you. <laughs> but once he grabs you, once he grabs you, you're in trouble. Because if you don't have the heart of David that dropped down and said, Lord, Lord, I've sinned and thee again. If you can't do that, you're finished. I'm, th- I'm going to close with this. I'm done. Close with this. I'm going to close with this. Absalom was so enraptured. Never thought about the consequence. And or consequences of his action. See, you gotta be careful with your affections. Yeah, you gotta be careful, people of God. It might look right in your eyes, but if it's the corroborating word, I told you, the Holy Ghost cannot tell you anything Jesus did not say. If the Holy Ghost tell you anything Jesus did not say. Then the Bible said, let that spirit be a curse. Because it's not God. Because Jesus always said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. You see, people don't like when I say this because they want to come up with stories. And the Holy Ghost told me. People love to lie on the Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm in the spirit. If I got to tell you I'm in the spirit, I'm not in the spirit. I feel an anointing. That's a lie. Anointing is a gift. I feel the move of God. God don't move like that. When God moves, he speaks. When God, I feel there's a word. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon the face of the deep, and God said, whenever God moves, he speaks. He God, I feel that one. Whenever he moves, he speaks. All this rhetoric. Sometimes you, 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 you start doing the same thing to please. And sometimes you get so caught up in this thing. Oh, I, I got to have her. Oh, roses are red, violets are blue. Sugar is sweet. Who sang that one? And so are you. And you're so caught up. But God never said that. And who God had for you, you never want. I believe our dear sister would have died yesterday. I believe you would have died if we were not listening to God. 
See, God will do some things, eh? God will do some, some incredible things. Just to show his way. But when you listen to God, I want to finish on a positive. When you hear and you listen to God, when you are obedient to his word, when you are, you set aside your own desire to do that which is pleasing to God, you'll always come out. Come on, stand everywhere in this place. We got to go. You'll always come out. Like pure gold. Did you learn something tonight? Yeah. Come on, did you learn something tonight? Yeah. Did you get a revealed word of God tonight? Yeah. Oh, there's so much more God has to say. And we just we just kind of dealt with Absalom in a in an hour and a half. There's so much to talk about him, but we got to move on. I, I got to talk to you about David because you'll see a, a different heart. We, we saw the heart of Absalom. God wanted me to talk to you about the heart of Absalom. Then he wants me to talk to you about the heart of David. Then he wants me to talk to you about the heart of Ahitophel. Then he wants me to talk to you about the heart of Hushai and, and Ataya. We don't even know in Bible. Then Shimei. Shimei, some of you call him. He wants me to talk about Shimei. He wants me to talk about those men, David's strong men, that would chop your head off. He said, what am I, a dog? This man talk to me. There's some bad boys in God. There's some assassins in God. Not everybody walk around going, oh. Everybody think everybody's a, a pre, the preacher must be like, oh, no. Some preacher, because God anointed them to chop your head off. God wants me to deal with this. We're dealing with this. Tell somebody we're dealing with this. And we're still dealing with love. Because in David, you will see true love. A little sneak preview. Can I give you a sneak preview? That's a quick one. Come on, come on. Give me. I, I'm so. No, get up. <laughs> I think it, you always want to see the next series, no? The next episode. That's what it is. How do you know it's called an episode? Okay, watch TV. <laughs> quick episode. Synopsis. David gets thrown out of Israel. And the priest says, wherever the man of God goes, so am I going. And that means the ark of God is going. <laughs> Ooh, can I stop there? Oh, you want a little bit more? Okay. So David says, not in Nagoso. God is not the God of David. God is the God of Israel. God must be in the heart of his people, not walking up and down with David. It's not David's God. So he said, my God, ain't your God, honey? Hi, everybody, God. It's the church's God. David says, this is, this is, this is, oh yeah, okay. Lord. <laughs> the tree. <laughs> This man had a heart of God. He said, it's not David's God. He said, no, go back in, watch this, and serve your king. Mm. I felt that one. He, he, <laughs> still, I'm still in the trailer, I'm still in the trailer. <laughs> He gets, there's a coup going on. He gets thrown off his throne. And he's saying, go back and serve your king, Absalom. 
even before he captured, he's leaving, Absalom is coming. He said, no, 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 no. Go back. Now we know we ain't got that spirit. <laughs> Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Oh, you're in the right church, I tell you. You're in the right place for a word of God. Come on, lift up your hands. The Lord wants to talk to wisdom and life. Come on, lift up those hands. Why don't you come on say, Lord, give me the heart of Jesus. Give me the heart of Jesus. Come on, ask God for it. He wants to give you. Lord, give me, Andrew, the heart of Jesus. Oh, to be like you. Blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness and thy fullness. Hide Jesus, your own image in my heart. Come on, come on, ask him for his heart. Come on, come on, we're in the right church. Are we not in a, am I in the right place? Do we have lovers of Jesus here? Do we have lovers of Jesus? Can't you feel his presence already here? Can't you, I, I feel the Shekinah glory of God in the house. I've been feeling it since I walked in this place. Come on. Come on, let's take 30 more seconds to praise Jesus. This is a receiving time. This is a prophetic time. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you, this is a prophetic time. If, you have, if, your, if your tank is empty, this is a prophetic moment. If your tank is empty, all you got to do is open up your tank. Because Jesus, Jesus wants to pour in. He wants to pour in. He wants to fill you. He wants to empower. Oh Lord. Oh Shandala Bosia. Uh, come on, somebody shout Jesus. Come on, two more times. Shout Jesus. Come on, one more time with a big hallelujah. Shout Jesus. 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 Am I all by myself with Jesus? Can't you feel it? Can't you feel the inpouring? Can't you feel that yourself is emptying? Can't you feel like Jesus is pouring in? He's pouring in, he's pouring in, he's pouring in. He's pouring in. He's pouring in. He's pouring in. Come on, he's pouring in you. He wants to invest in you. You're a wonderful commodity. He wants to invest in you. You're going to have a good return. He wants to invest in you. Sister Sam, God wants you to pray this closing prayer. Sister Sam, you got this prayer tonight. You got this prayer. When you open your mouth, God's going to pour inside her. God's going to pour some things in you. Oh, yes. Tonight's your night to receive a blessing from God. Completely, yeah. My soul. Say, yeah. One more time. My soul say yeah. Come on, receive that. Yeah. 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 Somebody say yes, Lord. Yeah, yes, Lord. My soul say yeah. You'd say yeah. Shout it, say it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. 
Sister Sam, open up your mouth and pray. With those hands lifted up, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. Our strength and our demon, no retreat. No retreat. No retreat. God bless you, people of God. Hug and kiss somebody in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is surely changing our hearts. Is he not changing our hearts? He's changing our hearts.